There we go. Okay, so last meeting we did aristocrats, uh, normal ones, ones with error. We didn't get to Spanish, but we don't need to do Spanish, so that's completely fine. This meeting, we're doing some things called Caesar ciphers and Apache ciphers. And basically, they're both more variations of aristocrats. It's just that unlike aristocrats with errors or something like that, they're actually like methods you can use with math to, sol to solve these. Uh, it's not scary math. It's pretty much just addition and subtraction. Okay, so uh, I think this is going to be the last week uh, where I say this. I'm like decently sure everybody's joined it, but just in case you need to join it, uh, use 66 LAP4 and just get on there. Uh, thanks for doing the homework last week. Um, yeah, I don't think there's really anything to review there. Like I said, 20 questions is kind of a lot, so you didn't have to do all of them. Oh, and also, before we go too far, uh, sorry for not responding to some of your comments. I kind of saw them a little too late, but basically, if I just like go here. So right now, I think it should say that I'm logged out. So if I go to test manager, yeah, I'm logged out. Uh, you don't have to log in if you want to just uh, like save the test file as a PDF. Like if I go to week two homework and test packet. I can like control P here or just hit the big blue print button and I can save as a PDF and I can like use some other software to like write on it. If you want to solve it that way, that's completely fine. Or instead of like saving as a PDF, you can just print it off and like write on actual paper, but 15 pages is kind of a lot. Uh, or uh, I tried to show the interactive test thing. It wasn't working before, but like, yeah, for this one, you would need to log in. So like, you don't have to make an account or anything. You just sign in with like Google accounts that you have. And after you're signed in, you just publish the test and then you can assign it to yourself. And I'll just like go through the steps since I couldn't last time. So uh, here you would like edit what time you want to take it. I just have it set to now since like I'm going to show it now. And if I go to take this test now, I can like start typing, right? So this is probably like if it's but anyways, I'm not gonna solve anything, but like this is probably the most convenient way to do it if you're okay with logging in with Google. All right. So moving on from that, just a little bit of a look ahead. So today we're doing Caesar and Atbash, which is just building on aristocrats pretty much. And it's kind of like the soft introduction into math for code busters because what we have coming up next is Affine, Vision Ray. Uh, those are like, I guess the mid-tier math. They're also like pretty much addition and subtraction, but they're just a little bit harder than Caesar and Atbash. Baconian, I wouldn't really call it math, but it has to do with like binary. Um, it's more like memorization and like brute force trying every technique possible than like using math. Pollux and Morbit relate to Morse code. I guess that's kind of math, but not really again. Rail fence, also not really math. But anyways, like the real math is Affine and Visionary. Uh, I don't think you guys have to do Hill and RSA, so we'll leave those out. OK, so the first thing we have to learn today is how we're going to build our base for math and code busters. So like I showed, a lot of the ciphers are math related. Not all of them are just like aristocrats, patristocrats, xenocrypts, where you just use like your knowledge of letters to solve it. So I'm going to send out this poll. Let's see if you guys know how many letters are in the alphabet. All right. Uh, encouraging results. I'm glad we all know. <laughs> yeah, trust me, it's 25. I trust you. <laughs> all right. So yeah, it's 26. So I mean, in most normal people's minds, you probably think of this as one through 26, right? Because that's just how we count. But actually, in CodeBusters, we're going to shift everything back one step. And we're going to say A is 0 and Z is 25. So if we're counting from A, A is 0, B is 1, C is 2, and so on until we get to Z is 25. 
And that's basically how we do like all math and code busters. It's built on that like basic principle. Uh, I have to stop sharing for a second so I can get rid of this poll, but I'll reshare. There we go. All right, so yeah, like I said, 26 letters, zero through 25. Uh, this is a Quizlet. I'll release the Google Slides like right after this meeting ends. But basically this is a Quizlet where I just have like matching flashcards like A is zero, B is one, and so on. I like to put it on write mode. Uh, write mode is the old learn mode, if you guys didn't know. Uh, basically, I guess you can learn it any way you want, but since we're going to be typing most of the time, I just find that like write mode is more comparable to actual code busters than like only memorization by itself. Uh, at first, it's probably like kind of scary to memorize 26 different things, but it, it's not going to be that hard. Uh, really, like here I said, they're going to be effortless eventually, but you have to like start from somewhere, right? So the first thing for memorizing these are to choose your anchor points, because unless you're like a genius, which I, I mean, you're all geniuses, but unless you're all like super geniuses, you're not going to memorize all 26 from the start. So you kind of want to have like landmarks in between. So, uh, whoops. So that you can kind of like feel your way throughout the 26. Cause if I just have like zero and 26 or zero and 25 memorized, if I want to know like what number O is, it's 14, but that's like smack dab in the middle. Right. And I can't just count like 14 places or 11 places from the other side. Cause it's not going to be super efficient. So. An example is that say I memorize that I uh, converts to eight. Uh, this isn't a trick question. I actually does convert to eight. So if I see L in a cipher in a problem, all I have to do is count I, J, K, L. And I realize that L is three places away from I. So eight plus three is 11. So that's why at first learning anchor points is good. So the ones I'd recommend are A is uh, zero because uh, you know, there's not much thinking that goes into that one. Uh, e is four because like we said before a lot, E is extremely common. So you want to memorize what it goes to. Yeah, I sing that alphabet song in my head sometimes too. Um, yeah, so memorize E is four because that's the one you're going to need most of the time. I is eight, uh, O is 14. Basically just memorize the vowel placements because they're pretty well spread out through the alphabet. U isn't that necessary because it's just not very common, but you can memorize it if you want. Uh, T I would also memorize because it's the second most common and you're gonna see a lot of thes, a lot of thats, a lot of twos in uh, quotes. So it'll pop up a lot. And 19 is just kind of a good spacing away from 14 if you need to convert any letters that are in like the 20 to 25 range. And lastly, Z. You will like almost never see Z, but it's just easy to memorize because it's at the end. Yeah, TU, they're right next to each other, so you don't need it. Uh, but like I said before, these are just like starting points. If you do have enough problems, it's just going to come to you. Like, I don't know. I guess like some things are just weird. Like L is 11, and 11 makes a lot of L sounds. So like you can memorize that L converts to 11. Uh, N is just in the middle of the alphabet, so it's 13. Some of them, there are weird tricks, but eventually you won't need any tricks. Okay, so we're getting into the content now. The Caesar cipher is an aristocrat by definition. So it's got one letter switches with another to decode and encode, and all the spaces are the same. There's nothing weird, but it's a little bit easier than aristocrat because it's math related. Uh, basically, the simplest way to explain it is that each letter is substituted the same way. So if I say there's a Caesar shift of six, or if I say to encode with a Caesar shift of six, uh, remember encode means you take the message and you make it like unreadable, and decode means you take the unreadable thing and make it the actual message. So if I'm encoding with a Caesar shift of six, the first thing I have to do is convert all of the letters in my message. So if my message is hello, I need to convert H-E-L-L-O to numbers. 
uh, if you're solving this like in real life or in like an actual test situation, you wouldn't actually like, you know, write all the numbers on top of the letters or something. You would probably just do it like one by one in your head, like once you're comfortable with it. But encoding with a shift of six means that I have all those converted letters into numbers and then I add six to each one of them. So you can see here, I kind of spelled it out like H goes to N because seven plus six is 13. E goes to K because four plus six is 10 and so on. That's what encode with a shift of six means. So like I just demonstrated, when you encode, you add, uh, but we know that encoding and decoding are opposites, right? Uh, you go from legible to illegible, illegible to legible. So if you decode, you need to do the opposite of addition. So you do subtraction. So if I say this Caesar cipher has been shifted eight places, please decode it. I'm not adding eight anymore because I'm decoding it. So I have to subtract eight when I decode. So here, uh, I should have made this an easier example. I'm going to cover why, like you can see there's an A in WWXAQM. I'm going to cover why the zero goes to uh, 18 instead of like negative eight, for example. But basically you can see from like WW, it goes to OO. So 22 minus eight is 14. Uh, yeah, one thing about Caesars and Appbashes, uh, Appbashes I'll cover like later in the meeting, is that frequency tables usually aren't given. Uh, it's usually not a problem because just from like scanning the problem, you can pretty much see which ones are frequent and which ones aren't, but you won't have like an exact count. Okay, so what happens if I add a number, uh, add two numbers together and I get something above 25? Because we talked about how A is zero, Z is 25. It's not like we have more letters. So if we're adding, this has to happen during encryption. Uh, so basically, you need to think of the alphabet as circular. So it goes A, B, C, blah, 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 uh, W, X, Y, Z. And then after Z, you start at A again. So if you imagine it's just going in a circle and it keeps repeating itself. Uh, basically, how you would like think of this circle mathematically is using mods. Uh, so we have 26 letters in the alphabet. So if you encrypt, say I have an S and an X, I'll just convert them for you. Uh, it's 18 and 23. If I add those together, I'm gonna get 41. And that's obviously above 25. So I need to take 41 and consider that I completed one cycle of the alphabet and then I'm going to do another cycle and I need to see where I end up. So basically, we know there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So you do 41 mod 26 to find out on your second revolution through the circle where you're going to end up. Uh, so basically, uh, mod means you divide and you find the remainder. But since we can't get numbers that are like super high, pretty much it just means subtract 26 for our purposes. So in my example where I said S and X together, uh, 18 plus 23 is 41. 41 minus 26 is 15, and that's P. Uh, I don't expect you guys to like do it that fast right now since we just introduced the, the math part. But basically, that's what you would do if you get a number above 25. You just subtract 26 from it, and then you convert it back to a letter. So we're going to do the opposite process if we get a negative number. Because uh, so like, if the circle starts here and we go the zero through uh, 25, we can also like reverse the alphabet and go from zero to negative one to negative 25, I think, if I'm counting right. But basically, we can only get negative numbers during decryption because we have to subtract something to get a negative number. So we're doing the same thing. We're taking the number mod 26, but this time we're adding 26 because we want to get a positive number. We want to get our result to be in between 0 and 25 so we know what letter to convert it to. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the last slide. Here, if I show what I'm looking at, I was talking about A going to S before. Uh, A is 0 and S is 18. The reason that A goes to S when we have to decode by 8 is because 0 minus 8 is negative 8 a negative eight plus 26 is 18. So that's how you would uh, think about it. Uh, 
Uh, oh, strategies. All right, I thought we had an example problem. So for ENCODE, you don't wanna be repeating your work, right? So if you already did uh, an encryption for a certain letter, you don't wanna to have to do it like 11 times in the cipher. So say my quote starts with, no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to has, uh, I think three ends in there. Uh, we don't want to say we're encoding it by six. We don't want to do N, which is 13. We don't want to do 13 plus six, three different times just to get 19 when we already know it's going to be 19. So when you have that first N and you do 13 plus six equals 19, which goes back to T, you just want to fill in T's for all of the N's in the cipher. So you don't end up repeating yourself unnecessarily. Uh, decoding, uh, like I said before, it's literally just an aristocrat, except you have a way to check your work. So if you just solve it like an aristocrat, uh, that means like starting with one letter words, two letter words, contractions, the, that, any other word patterns you can imagine, uh, you can check your work. Because uh, say I have a four letter word, uh, the ends are the same and the third letter is really common, it looks like that. But if I write in that and then I perform all the subtractions and then I see they're shifted by the same amount, then I can be like 100% confident that it's that for a Caesar cipher. Uh, alternatively, you can just do subtraction on the entire thing instead of solving like an aristocrat. Okay, so we've got an example here. Uh, so I didn't end up figuring out how to enable annotations for everybody, but I think it's fine because seven people writing at once would get kind of hectic. So if you guys could just like tell me what to do in chat again. Uh, oh, okay. Here. First, before you tell me what to do, tell me what anchor points you remember, because I kind of forgot to put a letter to number conversion thing at the bottom, but just shout some stuff out. Yeah, A equals zero. Uh, something else equals eight, Ethan. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, it is from a song. That's where I took it from. So here, uh, I'll just start with A's, right? Because we already know it's zero and that's pretty easy. So we're encrypting with a shift of five. Encrypt and encode are the same. Decrypt and decode are the same. Uh, so shift of five, that means we're adding five. So somebody tell me what zero plus five is. Uh, not the number, but the letter. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, it's F. So. A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, it's the fifth or sixth, but zero to five. So we'd get F for all of the A's. This is what I meant when like the letter repeats and you don't want to end up doing the same addition problem like 10 times. Uh, okay, yeah, we know I, we know I is eight. What's well, eight plus five in letter terms? Yeah, it's N. I could hear you guys singing the alphabet to yourselves, you know, metaphorically. And one thing we can take advantage of here is that win happens three times. So uh, it kind of like, we can do one third of the work for the same amount, basically, because it repeats itself. Uh, is there anything we want to go with? People mentioned E, right? So E is for What's four plus five in letter terms? Yeah, it's J. Uh, when I started the beginning, like right after G and then like right before like Y were the hardest parts to like memorize. So, I mean, maybe those are like the parts to attack first because they don't appear super often, but they're kind of useful. So it goes to J. Yeah, L does go to Q, nice job. Oh, wow, there's only one E here, okay. Oh, those Qs look kind of ugly. Um, w goes to B. Oh yeah, that would be 22 plus five is 27, and then we do minus 26.
Okay. Uh, I think you guys get the idea on this one, so I'll just like do the rest of it while I think out loud. So this goes to I because five plus three is eight. This goes to T because it adds up to nineteen. X N S S S S T R Y W M Y. Okay, so if you wanted to do it and like check your answers, you can go back in the recording and just like look at what I have filled in right now. Uh, if you can read it. <laughs> All right, uh, this one is decode. So we have to flip our mind. Decode means subtraction. Uh, I guess somebody recommend how to start. <laughs> yeah, it was like that for me at first too. Negative 17. Yeah, so what do we do to negative numbers? Oh, wait, never mind. I thought you were talking about something else. I thought you were talking about what A goes to, but there is no A in here, I think. Okay, you know what? Let's start with, oh. I forgot to tell you this tip. So we know that the alphabet is circular. Uh, yeah, K does go to T, I think. We know that the alphabet is circular. So one thing we can do with that is we know that there's six or 26 of them. So subtracting 17, if we think about it, is the same thing as adding nine. So instead of subtracting 17 here, we can add nine because they're, yeah, because they're 26 places away from each other. Uh, Z. Z is 25, so 25 minus 17 goes to I, I think, because I is eight. Uh, okay, so, oh yeah, that makes sense since everybody thinks uh, 26 letters in the alphabet. Uh, I'm gonna start with K is T because that's the first thing I saw. No, not that many Ks. Okay. Uh, Z is I. Oh, after we solve this, you might want to take note of this word and this word because they're like somewhat common word patterns that'll help you do like aristocrat type things. T is C minus 17. Yeah. Yeah, you can think sequentially like that. It definitely helps. Uh, can you just guess this word then? Yeah, with. I don't think there are any ends to fill in actually, besides like this. V is E. Yeah, that's probably the one we wanted to do first since it'll solve most of the problem for us. Oh, this is also a word pattern that you might want to know. Every, yeah.
E is N. Yeah, it is. Because you can just add 9 to that one since it's probably easier than subtracting 17. What is OGI? Huh? <laughs> R is A, yeah. Thought, yeah, that's the word pattern I was talking about. Because it ends, or like it's ending and beginnings are somewhat reversed because it goes TH something something HT. Yeah, choice. R, yeah. I equals R, yeah. PFL might be, but. Um, yeah, I, th wait, hold on. 11, 17. I, I don't think so. Cause we have R here. Think about what can come before R. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be a conjunction. Uh, I, I know I said that before, but Technically, you can have anything after a comma. It's just usually a conjunction. Yeah, F is O. Think about what word you usually have before R, even though like you have this thing here. P equals Y. Yeah, alone. Yeah, it's you. So then it would be your own in the second line. SSB, yeah, nice job. Can you guess this word now, the third word? Yeah, experience. <laughs> So the way you would recognize this is that you have like ease placed out symmetrically throughout the thing. All right, do we want to get these last ones by math or do we want to just like look at the words and guess? X is not S. What do we usually have after I, N? Yeah, G. <laughs> oh no, don't worry about it. Guessing is part of it. Painting, yeah. So what's related to painting that looks like this? something a painter uses. Canvas. Yeah, nice job. So with every experience, you alone are painting your own canvas, thought by thought, choice by choice. Yeah, sometimes, like, sometimes it does lead you down a different path. <laughs> so that's why it's nice to have Caesar, because then you can check your... Uh, answer right away and realize like whether you're heading down the right path or not. Uh, I think I have another example actually. Yeah, this one, it doesn't tell you the shift. So we're actually going to have to guess at first and confirm our guesses um, like with what we know about Caesar, like th the fact that each letter has to be shifted the same amount. So we're kind of treating this like an aristocrat at first because we don't have the math part known yet. So what do we want to look at first in aristocrats? What's OO? Oh yeah, that, that's a good question. That is the first thing I'd look at. There's only one letter that can be doubled after the apostrophe in a, conju in a conjunction. It, it's part of the conjunction. That's not a comma, sorry. It's an apostrophe, yeah. Any ideas?
maybe it's easier to consider that there's three letters before the apostrophe. So like conjunctions usually have a pronoun and then a couple letters after it, or like a pronoun and then an apostrophe and then a couple letters after it. So it's a three letter pronoun that you know. Okay, yeah, you got OL. LL is the only thing that can come after the apostrophe uh, if it's like the same letter twice. Yeah, but since, yeah, you, that's what I would have guessed. And since we have like a bunch of different letters written in right now, we can check the shift. So I'll, I'll just check it for you. F o is 14, L is 11. 14 minus 11 is three. So we need to check that everything else matches up to a shift of three. X is 23, U is 20. So 23 minus 20 is three. So that's how we know that we're on the right track. Your, yeah. I, I was wondering what you were saying there. Uh, good guess, but try checking it with the shift because we know that the shift is three now, right? That we checked. Are we sure about it? <laughs> Remember, check with the shift because we, we know how much we have to subtract by. Also, this word pattern is sometimes helpful. E is B. Yeah, that's right. Seed or feed is a good guess. Uh, there's one word that if you change the first letter, it still ends in E-E-D. It's a lot more common in quotes, though. Oh, were you adding? Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, Z has to be W. Yeah, just make sure uh, decode or decrypt is subtraction. W is T. Yeah, sounds right. Remember, yeah, that's the word pattern I was talking about. Oh, uh, we can probably get this word. It's also here. J equals G. Yeah, that matches up. What is there actually only one of them? Yeah, DQG is and, and you can check with the three or the minus three shift as well, just to make sure. B is S, yep, smarter. Always remember, this is also a word pattern. I, I know I'm saying a lot of these are word patterns, but they do appear a lot. Seal, I don't, it's not seal, <laughs> yeah, I, it, it is seam. Usually when you have S-E-E -E something, it's gonna be seek or seam, usually seam, might be like seed, or seen or something, but those are less common as words.
braver, yeah, than promise. Yeah, you guys are getting these quick. You believe? I forgot many yous. Oh, yeah, that's true. I thought we didn't get it yet. I think we have all of these, uh, maybe except the last letter. Think, yeah. All right, so promise me you'll always remember you're braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smarter than you think. So that's how you do it. Uh, if it doesn't tell you how much it's shifted by, which it usually doesn't for decode, it's just going to say, this is a Caesar cipher, decode it. So you're going to start off like an aristocrat. You're going to confirm that your answer is right by doing the subtraction to figure out what the shift is and if your shift is consistent. Uh, and then you're going to either like do the rest of it with math or like a combination of math and aristocrat skills. Um, I think we're moving on to Appbash now. Appbash is easier than Caesar in my opinion. It's more memorization, but it's easier. This class is so fun. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so for at bash, I made up this term. It's called complementary letter. Um, I, I think you guys have heard of this before. So like complementary angles in a triangle add up to 90 degrees. The reason I'm calling these pairs of letters complementary is because they add up to 25. So like A and Z, 0 and 25 are complementary. B and Y are complementary because um, they're 1 and 24. So if you think about it, if this is like A and this is Z and you're counting inwards, you shift inwards one letter each like this. And that's like the pairs of complementary letters. So basically, Appbash is all about, it doesn't matter whether you're decoding or encoding. You're just substituting the complementary letter in. Obviously, like if you're encoding, it's not going to end up looking like a sentence. And if you're decoding, like you'll actually be able to read it. But the method for decoding and encoding is the exact same. So uh, this is just an example, but like ZKKOV KRV uh, decrypts to apple pie. Because Z is 25, uh, 25 minus 25 is 0, K is 10, uh, 10 minus 25 is negative 15. Or wait. Okay, I just did that completely wrong. Don't listen to me. 25 minus 10 is 15. So 15 is P. You always want to do 25 minus the value of the letter that you're switching. So 25 minus 14, which is the value of O, is 11, which goes to L. Uh, 25 minus 21, which is the value of V, goes to 4, which is E. So you get the idea. Uh, once again, this is just an aristocrat. Because one letter is always going to map to a different letter each time, and it's going to be the same letter. So if we look at this example, um, so how would we start this? What do you think? I mean, technically, we can just go off of memorization and go like one by one, but there are some things that make Appbash extremely easy because you always know what each letter goes to because it's the same every time. So like for instance, Z equals A. Yeah, that's probably one of the first things you would do because it's the easiest conversion to make. M equals N, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good reasoning. All right, so number one tip for Appbash, besides just like memorizing and actually converting Y equals B. Uh, yeah, so number one tip, when you see GSV, that is the.
what whenever you see GSV, that is the that that's just what you want to fill in each time because uh, G plus T, so sixteen plus nineteen goes to twenty five, and you can like check with all the other ones, but basically, you know that GSV is the. There's another the yeah you're right. have been yeah um and also you know that s goes to h and like if you just flip it h goes to s so you don't even have to do memorization to like do the opposite so you can just fill in all the h's as s have been yeah t goes to g yeah uh yeah same thing i just did and then this letter becomes pretty easy to find. Titan. I forgot that was an English word, but there's another word that looks like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, things. And as you can see, L didn't go to O. I mean, L didn't go to I. Uh, I kind of spoiled what it goes to. But that's how you can see that it's not Titan. Yeah, total. Of, yep. And we see that L goes to O here, so then O goes to L. Hastily. That is a really good guess. I would not think of that word, but it's not hastily. Uh, we're talking about something, something, the. So this is a noun. It's not an adverb. R is I. Uh, we filled that in already, yeah. History, yeah, nice job. Uh, you don't see this word a lot in quotes at all, but it's in here, so we know that the middle one has to be a vowel. Yeah, some. All right, any guesses? that could have been avoided. Yeah, nice job. Uh, another tip, if you have a word that ends like this, where you have same, different, same, it's probably D-E-D, because that's how a lot of words are phrased in the past tense. And if you have have been that comes before that word, like it even strength, it strengthens the case that it's going to be past tense, because have been is automatically not present, future, anything like that. I think this slides is too short, yeah. So I think I'm just going to do a couple of screen shared cryptograms just so we can review aristocrats. Um, I'll go over this first though. Uh, the homework this week is gonna be similar in length. Once again, you don't have to do all of it, but uh, like I showed in the be beginning of the class, you don't have to necessarily log in, but it's a lot easier to just log in and do the test online. So if you want to do that, you can check out the recording again to see how. Uh, the main homework is to do uh, cryptograms, like always. Uh, the homework JSON for this week that I'm going to post to Google Classroom and that you should upload to Tobes. Oh, what did I just do? Um, yeah, the homework JSON I'm going to upload to Google Classroom is going to have mostly Caesar and Appesh. There's going to be a couple of review aristocrats on there. Uh, so next class, we're going to have Visionary and Affine. And yeah, right now, I'm just going to hop on cryptograms.org. Got to log out first, though. And if you haven't looked at this yet, then this is definitely like a good introduction just to, I guess, have somebody else to do it with. All right. So as you can see, like if I put something in, it 
automatically fills everything that maps to the same letter. So like that's convenient. Uh, the first letter is kind of a complex word pattern. Uh, I can see it, but it's a little bit hard to see. I would start with this word that I'm clicked on right now. If you want to make any suggestions. Oh, by the way, this is just an aristocrat. Yeah, S is E. Uh, that's a pretty good guess to make because nothing's really close to being uh, as big as 17. So yeah, I would make that guess too. Uh, this one's kind of deceiving because yeah, it's the, it's kind of deceiving because Q is actually like really close to frequency as U, but sometimes it just be like that. Oh, what's this letter? That, yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe you guys can see this word. The fact that it starts and ends in A. Okay, never mind. Maybe it's a little too hard, yeah. Uh, we just saw this word in one of the examples. History, yeah, nice job. Oops. Oh, geez, I really can't type. All right. Uh, here we have a double letter ending a five letter word. Yeah. What do we think this one is? I'm just working sequentially. Yeah, reveal. And then this word itself. Can we see what the first word is now a little bit more clearly? Yeah, land. <laughs> yeah, it's America. Nice job. Future, where? Uh, maybe this word is a little bit hard to see. Ages, yeah. Before, yeah. So now we solved the entire thing. If you go check it, uh, you can also hit enter instead of just hitting check it. Then you can see like the stats on it. You can see who is by. George Hegel, you can see like how fast people went. I mean, honestly, communicating like this, yeah, it's fine. We're not very slow. Don't worry about it. Because like, if you're just like doing it by yourself and like not communicating, like you can just like do it like that. So it doesn't matter. It's just because we were doing it together. Okay, so let's do this one. What are we thinking? Yeah, speedrun. GS and HG. Oh yeah, that's a good thing to look at. Uh, there are only certain letters that can both start and end a two-letter word. Uh, there are other two-letter words, though. Like, there's two, there's so, no. I mean, most of them don't pop up very often. But my guess is that yeah, my guess is that GS is of, because S is not super common, just like F isn't super common, so I think this is of. And then alternatively, H is super common, so what might that be? Two, yeah, I'm leaning towards two. Uh, actually, this word looks kind of weird, so it might not be two, but... <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta like fill in different letters to see like what it might look like, like whether it looks normal or not. Ooh, I the. I also thought that, but like this word kind of eliminates it. 
because it looks weird, you know? <laughs> something TH, something, something E. Also, like, sometimes in cryptograms, there are just short quotes like these that are, like, kind of impossible to get. <laughs> we got to search it out. Some people actually do that on this website because they're, like, obsessed with having a 100% record. But, yeah, just kidding is the right thing to say. Don't do that. Uh, here, I'm just going to refresh so that we can solve something more doable. Okay, well, the first word looks pretty easy. What does it look like? Yeah. Uh, it's probably a harder word to get. Mm, let's look at this word. XCJ. Uh, I don't think AI is is. Usually is is a really great guess for a two letter word at the beginning of a sentence, but there's another one that matches a little bit better. W A is two. Okay, I <laughs> sorry, I didn't see that. A I is of yeah. Uh, usually, if you have a two letter word, the first one's pretty common, and the second one's not, then it kind of has to be of or if, and in this case, it has to be of. Uh, let's look at this word. What kind of words like? What can be a double letter ending to a word that already has E? E-L-L -L is a good guess, but it's not it. Uh, it matches up with O-V is. Because is. like, if you think about it, this can be ness or less. Like it can end in ness or less. I'm just going to fill in this. Uh, the reason it doesn't end in then is because H is not common at all. So it matches up more with M. And if you think about it, them, like in the syntax of a sentence, if you guys have heard of that word yet, it's like an object, and objects come at the end of the sentence usually. So it's probably them. OK, let's go back to X, Z, J. What, what could this be? And yeah, and that solidifies that this is within. Limits of the nice out. It's not state because we already used T. Remember that this uh, this website auto fills all of them for us. Stare out. It's a good guess, but if we have R before N, like it just doesn't make sense, right? We can't make a word like that. Yeah, it's the task. Nice. Science. Somebody, somebody said what this word is, right? Yeah, knowable. Center, nice. All right, don't worry about the slow. <laughs> and I think we'll do a couple more. And then next time I'll just pack our lesson a little bit more. Mm, okay, so probably we start with one letter words, right? A lot of the time where you can go wrong, yeah, it's either A or I. A lot of the time where you can go wrong is you put the wrong one letter word. My advice is that usually, like this is usually, a, a one letter word that appears in the middle of a three letter word is A, but there's a reason that I think that this is I actually. Because you have this two letter word and then you have this three letter word that ends in the same two letters. Actually, this kind of advanced probably, but I think it's I. I could be wrong though. Oh no, I'm definitely wrong. Okay, never mind. Okay. Yeah, the thing I said before, <laughs> the thing I said before, uh, when it's in the middle of a three letter word, it's usually A. Just, just take that to heart. Uh, this is a word pattern you might wanna know in the future as and has, it could be like an and can though, or like an and man. So actually I think it is an. Yeah, but it's it's hard to make that guess, but I'll just fill it in now. Cause this, this first word tells me that it's uh, an. Uh, can we figure out what, yeah, GCI is the, do we see what the first word is? Neither. Yeah, nice job. Uh, 
Has anybody else said anything? R is a vowel? Where's R? Oh, yeah. Nor, yeah, nice job. Uh, history seems to keep popping up in our quotes. Of, uh, yeah, I'll just fill in the words that we pretty much can all see. Uh, what do we think this one is? Yeah, be understood without understanding. Okay, life individual. Yeah, nice. Okay, we got a contraction. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, honestly, there are some contractions that you can combine, like the length of the contraction plus frequency. Like this one suggests a very specific contraction to me. And also, it's good to assume that usually contractions end in N apostrophe T most of the time, it's not going to be a possessive contraction that ends in S. A lot of the time it is, but most of the time it isn't, basically. Is Y E? Yeah, I think so. K is D? Uh, I don't think. Oh, it can't be they because we have a D here, right? And it can't map to itself. Also, like D is fairly common, so you might want to use that in your guesses. There's also like this sequence, something, something, that might look familiar. Yeah, let's just assume that it's T, because most end in T. And then if it ends in T, what has to be the letter before the apostrophe? Yeah, N. Aren't. Yeah, that's what I was going for. And, yep, 20, nice. Until die, yeah. Many, yeah, what, what, what's the second word? This is a word pattern that comes up a lot, people, yeah. 25, yeah. until they are. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Whenever you have like a four letter word and then a three letter word that have like these types of frequencies, it's probably they are. Until 70, what's this one? Buried, yeah. Because uh, the reason we know it's not something weird, uh, actually, I don't know what else it could be, but it mentions die. So we're thinking along the lines of like death. So that's why we think of buried. Yeah, it is a very weird quote. Oh, it's by Franklin. There are a lot of very weird quotes on this site. Uh, let's do one more, and then I feel like we can wrap up. Yeah, we are improving fast. It's the magic of this site. Uh, that was a good guess. I don't think it's the, though, because if we have a four-letter word, I can't think of a four-letter word that has the second letter as a T. Unless you're talking about a different word, because I do see the in this quote. Oh, wait, the reason I don't think QMS is and is because if we compare with frequencies, S is super common, Q is like non-existent. There's a different contraction that kind of fits that pattern, where the first two letters aren't that common and the third letter is like super common. K is either I or A. You think it's I, but you don't know. I also think it's I. Uh, I think it's pretty safe to guess I because it's not super common, right? And we know that A is pretty common. Okay, can we look off at this word? Uh, I don't think it's E or A. Just because we, we need to cross consider. Yeah, it, it's T because we have that. And then that tells us the. And then we have this contraction. But yeah, that's what I was going for. When the first two letters of the three word contraction aren't super common, but the third one is, then it's probably but. Uh, this word pops up again. What's this word? People, yeah. Hmm. 
really. Not, yeah. Not many. A, A is S. Uh, that's actually a good guess because it is a double letter that ends something. But we have a slightly better place for S just because of this word. Yeah, read. Yeah, ones. And then what's this? Study. A good guess, but it ends in the two same letters. Yeah, it's stuff. All right. Uh, I think that's our last one for today. So I'll just review. Uh, keep doing what we just did. Keep practicing on cryptograms.org. I'll post some Caesar and Atbash and Aristocrat stuff that you can upload to Tobes and do online or like through a PDF or printed. And then Visionary and Affine. It sounds peasant like. <laughs> Wait, you mean like historical peasant like back then or like a peasant now? Okay, I'm going to stop recording.